We're here with Mayor Joshua Garcia uh, for the mayor's message. And this month, uh, Mayor Garcia, I'd like to go a little deeper into the middle school. At your State of the City address before the City Council, you assured them and all of us who were tuned in that building a new middle school is not going to bankrupt the city nor its residents. Can you please elaborate some more on that? Well, so the conversation around the middle school has going as far back as 10, 15 years. Um, understand that uh, when the city re restructured its district to go from middle school to K to eight model, we've put kids that were middle school age population into elementary school buildings with elementary school kids that weren't designed to be a K-8 model. And so um, uh, from that moment on, the, com the community has been having conversations about trying to transition back, what that looks like. Last, I wanna say two election seasons ago, we had an opportunity to approve two middle schools to be built. Um, the voters spoke loud and clear on that, um, uh, uh, that the vote was really to secure the authorization from the community to go about, um, uh, call, as a voter referendum. So to go above and beyond uh, our, our spending limits to build this. And just because what we had, the, the, the proposal that we had forwarded or shared with the community wasn't at all within the um, the budget limits of that moment, which is why we needed the the, the the, the vote to, to happen out in the community. Uh, but that was made clear. And so we regrouped, we re-strategized and refocused and put forward a proposal um, that was focused on building what we need at the most feasible option um, available within the budget limits of what we have. And that's what's in front of the council at the moment um, for authorization to go forward with bonding. Um, so, you know, I want to say the past year and a half, the school building committee has been meeting two to three times a month um, uh, to go through this process with a keen focus on making sure that whatever it is that we brought forward um, to, to construct that is within the budget limits of what the city can afford. Mayor, uh, for people who don't know, what does it mean for the city to take out a bond? That's like taking out a loan? Yeah, it's um, right. It's it's borrowing, and 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 the bond that we're looking to secure is a thirty year, and so we would make and and we have our the city holy we have our debt schedule. First payment would for this particular bond if things were to go through as scheduled wouldn't be made till fiscal year twenty seven. We're currently in fiscal year twenty four, and so we have a debt squad schedule where debts are rolling off every year. And so we try to maintain a specific debt limit and not surpass that. And basically what we'll be doing is just kind of absorbing that within our current debt schedule and not and, and making sure that that doesn't tap into further appropriation and take away from services just to keep up with the debt payment. So would would the Holio taxpayers see a, a larger bill? Um that's where it gets complicated because it's not it's not black and white. Municipal finance is very fluid um, and constantly it's a moving target. And there's all sorts of different revenue sources that we depend on to balance the budget. And so, um, you know, we 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 rec we try to forecast out what our revenue limits are uh, when we're putting our budget together for the next fiscal year. Um, and then uh, making it all work and, and be balanced. And so the debt schedule that we're putting together, um, if, if you can think about it like this, like if you're at your household, you know, in your own home, you have made home improvements and you've took out debt um, to make those home improvements of, I don't know, $30,000, let's say. And in five years, 10 years, that debt's gone down um, to $10,000, right? And then you take out new debt up to $30,000. You never, ex that $30,000 is your debt limit. You know that with your income, you can pay, you know, that debt schedule. Um, we're keeping 
our debt capacity within that limit. Like we're not taking more than what we can afford. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's so, what makes sense. You know, how it impacts taxes. I mean, really, it, it, it's it's going to be incorporated with everything else that we try to juggle here in the municipality. So um, right now, you know, I can say, you know, we're putting a plan together using different revenue sources available to us to keep up with those debt payments moving forward. But, you know, things can change in the future. Health insurance costs might go up. Other uncontrollable expenses might go up that can impact the tax rate to say that the tax rates going up is because of the schools just would be it wouldn't be unfair um kind of kind of response so um it's it's a uh, very comp when, when it comes to talking about tax increases and what that means and what's contributing to it i can give you some factors involved within our budget that um, uh, you know, and, and really it just becomes, comes down to the values, direction and priorities of the city and how we want to, what we want to fund to, to balance that, um, and maintain a decent tax rate. Okay. So what's the final price tag for the middle school? So the total construction costs, it's at $85 million. Mm -hmm. The state is covering more than half of that. Mm -hmm. So the city of Holyoke is, and this is very conservative um we're looking at a dollar amount on the city share about 40 million mm -hmm. now we do anticipate that when we go out to bid um and and you start to get the true numbers it can be less um we anticipate it's going to be a little less than 40 million but then again with the way things are going and costs you know fluctuating it can be more and if it is more we wouldn't be able to um, support uh, the project at that time um, unless we go back and regroup and work with our council and the community. Uh, but we anticipate that the the city share, we're looking at 40 million, but we're hoping that we're looking forward to see that cost to be less when it's all said and done. Um, and the 80 million, Mayor, that includes the desks, the light light fixtures, well, yeah, so the, the furniture, the furniture, the window, uh, all those things uh, also includes demolition Okay. Uh, of PEC because where we're building this middle school is on the PEC site. Right. And so we'll be replacing what's there with a new uh, what they call a model school. You're um, in the community a lot, Mayor. What kind of support are you seeing for this middle school, say from teachers, residents, parents? residents who don't have children but are interested in this well residents so for anyone that knows the peck school building that has to work in it has to be in it it um understands that this is a need and is very excited about knowing that the city is taking this as a priority and, and doing what we can to replace that school with a with a much more modern up-to-date um of energy efficient school designed to meet the today's standards of what our our kids need of that age um so yeah they're they're very excited of uh, people that don't have children in this in our schools or go to that school or, or whatever um it's a combination of people that are excited that we're doing this and feel like it's a need and we should do it and then you got others are like hey do what you want but just keep it within the budget um hey, and and you know which is fine with me i can i can do that um as long as we support uh construction of this school mm -hmm. i haven't heard anybody tell me that um this is terrible not a good idea we shouldn't do this work you know um uh, uh like at all it's mostly uh generally supportive whether if you use the schools or you don't use the schools um you know as long as again i think the worst of it is just we you know it doesn't matter just keep it within the budget um of what you have so this is the second time that we will be voting on this is this true at the november ballot uh, so, here? well not out on the ballot um mm -hmm. in november the public remember came out and voted because we had to um seek debt authorization from the community that was beyond our limits yeah uh, uh, you know so currently 
the vote is to the council and not the public. Oh, and okay. That, so the that's for debt, ex, debt, debt authorization for what is within our limits. Okay. Uh, okay. So when is the council going to take this up? They, the it's in front of finance committee. They have a meeting scheduled for the 24th of May. Mm -hmm. um, and from that, <clears throat> it comes out of committee back to the full council, which I believe will be their first meeting in June. Okay. Um, and once it's in front of the full, full council, that vote right there is what matters. It's such and a, I, I, uh, and it, ahead, it, I can say that, like, you know, we've done a lot of work talking with counselors, trying to educate as much as possible. This process has been really bottom up um, and organic. Um, and I feel confidently that you know, I've been trying to encourage unanimous support. Um, and I and I do got to say, I think members of the council have brought up a lot of great, very important questions, very important concerns. In fact, in this process, things that were brought up really helped us pivot and um, uh, understand more um, how to address specific concerns that were mentioned, and they were very good, valid concerns. Um, so the, the committee has done a lot of work addressing a lot of that to be sure that we're coming forward with something that we can all buy into. Um, each of the members of the council um, that participated and even the community at large, but right now it's been getting aligned um, with those that were voted in to represent the public, making sure that what we're bringing forward is a product um, that you know addresses key objectives um, so that makes it a, a community bought in product. Um, so I'm, I'm confident, fingers crossed, that we're going to get unanimous support from the council. So we'll see. Thank you very much, Mayor. But you were going to ask me something. Sorry. I was going to gonna ask you something. I was going to go to another place of um, what do you think is different about this, this time that there seems to be support, there seems to be a ground swelling of support people agreeing, yes, we do need a middle school versus last time people were very upset and it, the, what's the word, suspicious. What do you think changed between, I think it was two years ago, was it, or three years ago and this time? You know, honestly, I think that the process, the way that it did is the process and it had to happen that way. And I'll tell you why, you know, it, it you had something that came forward and you know you had some you had you had an idea a proposal that came forward the community came out and shared their opinions one way or another whether we were for it or against it and whatever and i think in that process revealed a value a, a, an important concern um uh, taking on cost that can potentially burden um, taxpayers um, and and the city, and and, and you know it's a, it was a tough debate because you know we're talking about kids and youth and what about their burdens, their concerns, and you know we've kicked the can down the road for so long, and um, and and you had people that understood that it was going to be a financial burden, but we're willing to do anything for our city's kids because we haven't done anything for so long. So the debate went every which way possible, and the conclusion of that was, hey, look, we're not saying we don't want to do this. Um, we're saying this is a real concern. We can price out people out of the city if the taxes, you know, are, you know what I mean? And talk about the business commercial tax rate, and that's already being high. And, you know, there were some real concerns that the those that were that voted no and were against the, the what was being proposed at the ballot. Um, and so we took a step back and said, OK, so there was alignment happening in that process um, that ultimately led to what we have today. So I think, you know, folks were arguing in the last process, you know, there were people saying that they didn't know about it, that they weren't included in it, that, that mind you, there was a process. People were included, it's just people weren't really paying attention. But, you know, regardless, um, uh, you know, 
now in that the, the, when we were out voting and campaigning, mm -hmm. um, people now knew and people were paying attention. And so people were at the table. Yes, it's it's cost us more time on this. Um, you know, we could have built this a long time ago, but it would have caused different issues that then city leaders would have to be dealing with today. Mm -hmm. um, but now, like, you know, you have um, a product where that that that's essentially, you know, came out of this long 10 year process, you know what I mean? That we all bought into and we have ownership in. And that's, you know, that's government, that's community. Um, uh, you know, and, and, and I'm just happy to know that we didn't just forget about it, that we continued. I wouldn't call it a fight. Um, it was more of, because again, people in this community want to build this middle school. Even those that voted against it and lobbied against it at the ballot last time, they wanted to build a middle school and meet the needs. They just didn't want us to do what too much that we couldn't handle and that was going to hurt us in other ways that people might have not anticipated, which yeah, is fair. More of, more honestly. Of a struggle it was the struggle. People struggled from all sides on how yeah, to I mean, you know it's I, I I thought it was a very and again I was in that last battle when we were out there in the community campaigning. I was all for building this middle school. I was on leading with a group of folks leading that campaign, mm -hmm. but I always had the concern about the the financial proposal that this was gonna the the financial impact this might have in our community. Mm -hmm. You know, but you know, I was willing to do what I needed to do for um, our city's youth and 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 my children too, and um, and I knew that you know we haven't really been in, investing in them to the scale that we should be. Um, uh, but you know the the conclusion was what it was, which I thought was fair. But here we are now with a new proposal that helped meet a lot of those concerns the community had. That isn't going to have um, that negative impact um, that people were worried about when we were considering to build two new middle schools. So we didn't want to bite off more than what we can chew, um, which I thought was a fair concern. But here we are now, and. Um, looking for that support from the council so that we could start construction as early as well. They say fall. I was anticipated. I think February of 2025. It can happen sooner. Wow. So not 2024, 2025. 2025. Wow. Okay. Which is a, a lot sooner than what we all anticipated when when we secure the design team. Mm -hmm. They had a very aggressive timeline proposal that um, starts this project. If everything happens in accordance to the schedule, it starts it much sooner than what we all thought it was going to start. <clears throat> okay, Mayor. Thank you very much. I hope I was. I, it's, you know, it's you a know lot. It is, is that you know everything, you know all the details. And so how do you choose which ones to to say and in what order. And and also again, it's not black and white. It's never it's never black and white. It's I think always you explained that really well though. I think you explained that very well earlier when it was you have that dead ceiling. And so if we're ten thousand below it, that means we can go ten thousand more with something else. That became very clear. And then the other thing too is like again going back to that example of your home mm -hmm. your roof goes no one has twenty thirty thousand dollars sitting in the bank account right mm -hmm. and you're just to mm -hmm. just to um unless you're really wealthy mm -hmm. just to spend um so you know we you borrow you plan you look at your revenue sources and oh and you have that kitchen you want to fix and the bathroom needs to be upgraded and all you have this other issues you want to do within your home Mm -hmm. um, and you borrow for those and you do that within your limits of what you can and can't do. Right. Like, so that's what, that's the responsible budgetary management that I'm trying to bring into our form of government mm -hmm. to help us mm -hmm. make sure that we're not making short-sighted decisions. And I think that at the end of the day, that's where a lot of people, um, that we're concerned about, right. Are we making a short-sighted decision? That's important. No one disagrees that it's not important. We need to invest in our youth. 
but to make sure that as we go forward, navigating the minefield, that we're not stepping on a mine. You know what I mean? That we're gonna make decisions that is going to offer a positive impact across the scale and not, not um, result in unintended consequences that can further impact our, 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 city, our city's financial health. Um, so that's, that's where we are. Um, I'm, I'm, I feel good about the work. Not that I did. All I did was help facilitate and shepherd things through. But the work that this school building committee did, the work that the city councilors have done to date um, to be involved in that process, the contributions of this community through that process, um, that has got us to where we are right now in front, that's sitting in front of the city council at the moment. So um, again, fingers crossed, unanimous support, and let's build this middle school.